sometimes we don't grow. And so right now, we are uh, ready to get into the Word of God. But just before we do, we would like to thank all of you who are viewing us by live media streams. We praise God for you. And we pray that you get out here to God's Way Gospel Church. Where Amen. We are a place where we believe the Bible, the Word of God. We teach it. And we strive to live it day by day. And so we welcome you here to God's Way Gospel Church. God's Way, can we put our hands together? Amen. Amen. We encourage you to get here. You can find us at 15501 Euclid Avenue in the great city of East Cleveland, right here on Taylor Road. And you'll see that there is some problem with getting into the parking lot on one side if you were to try to get here off of Coit, but there's another street that you could take to get here. And mother, what's the name of the street that has slipped my mind? Right here. Elderwood. Elderwood, thank you. Man, my little members as slow as me. We are all in the right church. Okay. <laughs> what I gave you. Right on Elderwood, right around the corner. Amen. Elderwood, yeah. You can take Elderwood and get here. Right. And uh, you'll, you'll be able to park it. So I'm often asked, how can you be a blessing to this ministry? And the first thing I say, we need your prayers. Please pray for us. Pray for the leadership as well as the congregation. Pray for the city of East Cleveland because we need your prayer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pray for the body of Christ as a whole. And if you pray for the body of Christ, uh, Christ as a whole, you won't miss us. Right. And so the second way you can be a blessing to this ministry is by your financial contributions, which you will see on the screen. And so we thank you in advance for your financial contributions, which uh, so many of you do give. And uh, we have been blessed because of it. Uh, this morning, we are uh, preparing our hearts now to go into the word of the Lord. Uh, we're celebrating the Christmas season. Yeah, uh, thank you, Lord. The birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. And so as we do that, if we could all stand to our feet, we're going to go to the book of Isaiah, looking at the seventh chapter. And we're just going to read one verse, verse 14. That's Isaiah 7. Verse 14, and doing a service, if you're on your cell phones, let it be nothing but notes that you're taking or the word of God. Let us not be playing games or looking at any entertainment, but this is our time to focus solely on the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so here's what the Bible says, says in Isaiah, the seventh chapter, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be born with a child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I would like to start with the subject title this morning was Jesus' birth, the result of the supernatural power of God or superstition. I'll say it again. Was the birth of Jesus the result of supernatural power of God or superstition? If we were to take a look at the definition of superstition, Webster defines it as a belief or practice resulting from ignorance fear of the unknown, trust in magic or chance, or a false conception. Also, superstition is also described as the irrational, objective attitude of mind towards the supernatural, nature or God resulting from superstition. And so when we look at this this morning, we know that sinners and even believers struggle with the supernatural birth of Jesus Christ. And when we look at the supernatural birth of Jesus Christ, many of us have experienced somebody arguing with us about the idea 
that Jesus' birth was simply a copycat of other gods of old. They point to the idea of Horus as a superstition uh, religion that is not even considered seriously concerning the conception of Horus. We also see there are many others, uh, gods that are pointed to as gods that were supposed to be the originals of the story of Jesus Christ that is considered by skeptics to be copied by Christians. As a result, you can check on the internet and on websites and see more articles than ever concerning the ideology of we're serving a pagan God that was already talked about before Christ. And so the question is, is that true? We got to deal with real talk and real situations. How do we handle the virgin birth when there are those out there on internet land saying we are following a pagan God? Is it true that we worship a God that was stolen from other gods outside of biblical thinking and godly contextual evidence? We're going to take a look at that even now as we look at one of the lives of those who are claimed to be someone that Christianity stole the birth, the life, and resurrection from. There are many different gods that people name, such as Osiris and Mirthras that others says we have stolen the identity of what we know as Christianity and the virgin birth. For many out there claim in internet land that we are simply copycats of another. And so when we look at the claims of Horus, because we don't have time to go through all of them in one day, I'll deal with Horus today and we'll deal with others on another. But when we look at Horus, the idea that has been presented by internet trolls and those who come against the claims of the conception of Jesus Christ at, of, of, of a virgin. Horus was conceived, if you do any serious study, studying, looking back at Egyptology, Horus was conceived by a virgin mother named Mary and had a stepfather named Seth who's supposed to be the one that we stole the idea of Joseph from. Yet the truth is, Horus was not conceived of a virgin if you were to do a deeper study. In fact, the mural and contextual evidence from Egypt indicates that Isis, there was no evidence that Mary was ever a part of her name. Matter of fact, through Egyptology, it is never suggested that there was a virgin birth but that this conception actually took place as, <clears throat> watch this, this is something that will that'll really get to your mind when they're saying that we stole and copycatted. It's the idea of Mary hovered over the biological body, biological body parts of a man. And watch this. She became pregnant of Horus and conceived Horus after she was pregnant by Osiris. Here's the name, Osiris. And so she supposedly utilized his organs in order to conceive is the truth of this mythological character. She later had another son as well. There is no evidence that there was any three wise men, as many proclaimed, that was a part of this story as well. Horus' earthly father is also supposed to be an earth god and not like Joseph, who's just a regular human being. And so 
Others claim Horus was born in the cave like Jesus was supposedly born as well in the cave. And so his birth was supposed to be announced by angels and a herald by a star, and there were supposed to be shepherds that were present, just like the story of Jesus that we supposedly copycat. Yet the truth is there is no reference to a cave in Egyptian birth in this story, especially considering Horus. In fact, none of these details are present in ancient Egypt stories of Horus. Horus was born in a swamp, and his birth was not heralded by an angel, and there was no star. There were claims that Horus attended the rite of passage at the age of 12, and there is no data on the child from the age of 12 to 30 in reality. There is no continued effort in Horus mythology to be accounted for in all these years. So there's no real gap in the chronologic, chronologic, chronologic thing. There's no real gap in the chronology. Horus never taught in any temple at the age of 12 as Jesus did. And so we see many myths that have come into the place to try to steer us away from the idea of the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, if you was to look at old, old Greek texts and other manuscripts, you'll see that many believers not only believe the life of Jesus Christ, such as those who are of the four Gospels and the Apostles, they all believe. Not only do they all believe in the birth of Jesus Christ, it's important to know by evidence, if a person is going to make up a story or change a story uh -huh. in any historical record, it's normally done over a space of time period. And so the closer the lit written literature is to the date of the birth or the life or the resurrection, the more evidential the evidence becomes because there's lap no lapse of gap in time. And so when we look at the writers of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, and we look at other writers in the, uh, throughout the Gospels, and we'll find out clearly that these writers wrote early in Jesus' narrative in order to express the truth and reality of who Jesus is. And so, if you were to look at the early church fathers, you'll find out that they believed it. If you were to look at Ignatius, Ignatius believed that Jesus was the Son of God and born of a virgin birth. And he wrote it in his letter around about 103 A.D., You'll also see that Celsus, a Greek philosopher and opponent of Christianity, echoed this, echoed this charge in the second century when he did his work in his book entitled The True Disclosure, where he writes, it is clear that the issue of Jesus' parentage was of early concern and the first believers were committed to the idea of a virgin conception. And this is from a non-believer in his early writings. Justin the Martyr also wrote, about Jesus Christ as he wrote his apologetics concerning the gospel. And when we look at the word apologetics, it simply means one who defends the divine origin and authority of Christianity. It's just somebody who is the defender of the faith, which we all ought to be. We all ought to be uh, those who are known as apologists, and apologists don't mean that we apologize for anything, but it simply means we defend the faith unapologetically. And so, as believers, we ought to be listed and echoing in the same sense. If you was to look throughout history, you will find that there are many who saw the Gospels and were intrigued by what the Gospels had to offer. If you was to even look at Paul and Paul's time, Paul expressed as well the importance of knowing who God is and coming to that evidential truth of who God is. It was Paul who recognized on Mars Hills in Acts, the 17th chapter, verse 22 through 21. And here's what he wrote as he spoke to the modern philosophers and people of that day who were worshiping other gods and other gods had similarities to Jesus Christ as well as the gospel that we know. 
And so Paul writes, he puts, then Paul put up, stood up in the meeting of Arapharagus and said, men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I have walked around and looked around carefully at your objects of worship, I found an altar with this inscription on it to an unknown God. Now, what you worship as something that is unknown, I am proclaiming unto you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven. And the earth and does not live in temples that are built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life, breath, and everything else. All right. From one man he made every nation that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that man would seek him and perhaps reach out and find him, though he is not far from each of us. For in him we live, move, and we have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Uh -huh. When Paul writes this text, he's writing because in all religions you can find similarities. That doesn't mean that those religions are all the same. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you can do that to any claim. If you were to look at sports and you were to look at basketball, football, and baseball, you can all you can say according to all sports, you can say they all seem the same to me. They all have a ball that's involved. Right. They're all trying to score points. Right. They all, in some people's opinion, make way too much money. Right. They all, for the most part, be crying and whining to the referees and trying to get that point. You can make everything seem as if it's the same thing. True. Right. But we know in basketball, in order to score, you got to take a basketball and shoot it through a hoop. We know in football, you can't score the same way. You don't need a basketball. You need a football in order to run it and go into the end zone or throw it in the end zone and score a touchdown. Teach. When it comes to baseball, you need that ball to come flying out of that pitcher's hand. And it's either got to be hit in order for a person to run the base or it's got to be a home run where the individual can run all around yeah. all four bases yeah. and come home in order to win the game. Right, yeah. right. The reality is you can make almost anything seem the same if you're trying to make it seem that way. True. But what we ought not be looking at is so-called similarities, but what is the difference? All right. The last time I checked, in Jesus Christ, the only way to Jesus or the only way to God the Father is through the Son, Jesus Christ. So he now. says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. No man can come to the Father yes. but by me. Come on now. Yes. Jesus is different from all religions. Yes. He's different from Muslims because they only believe he was nothing but a prophet. They're looking towards, the, uh, towards other prophets and not the prophet of God who is not only a prophet in the sense of he knew the end from the beginning, but he was God-man wrapped in flesh. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Muhammad was merely just a man. And over time, the story was created that all of a sudden he did miracles. But when you look at the original text, it says that Muhammad claimed himself. He never did no miracles. Uh -uh. As a matter of fact, the word Jesus is mentioned in the books that the Muslims use more times than Muhammad himself. The book is pointing to Jesus, but yet they just keep holding on to the words of Muhammad. Uh -huh. When you look at other religions outside of that, such as the Jehovah Witnesses, they don't believe Jesus is the way, truth, and the life, the resurrected Savior. They see him as a, as a son of God, S-O-N, lowercase G-O-D, which is really, they believe in two gods when they claim that they only believe in one. And so Christianity is distinct from all other gods, and Paul recognizes that they're worshiping different gods. The philosophers of that day are debating, and while they're debating, Paul takes the time to recognize 
their words that they use. He studies their background, their culture, and their history. And as a result, he's prepared to defend the gospel. And he stops them. And as he does, he approaches them on the good foot. He says, man, I can see y'all religious. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And just like many other religions that are out there, you can see people are on Sundays and different days of the week. They're serving different and many other gods. You can see it. Paul said the way to reach them to understand who Jesus is, you approach them on grounds that are familiar. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. say, I recognize the similarities, but yet, let me show you the distinctions between your God and mine. Paul breaks this thing down as he does it. He deals with the fact that God doesn't need anything from man. He doesn't need you to build temples for him. He, just, he doesn't need you to, 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 to do these things in order to show people who he is. What Paul says is in reality, God is all by himself. He's the one who created the heavens and the earth. And if we can ever believe that he is the creator of heaven and the earth, it won't be so hard to believe he was born of a virgin. Yes. Because if he can balance the solar system sure. and everything that we know by fine-tuning sure. of his power, uh -huh. and the scripture says that everything came into existence by the spokesmanship of his word, then we can see that him to come in as a virgin, watch this, through the virgin birth, is mere child's play. Uh -huh. If we don't start in Matthew, we'll start in Genesis. Because even Jesus pointed to Genesis in many of his conversations. Okay. He pointed to Genesis when he talked about creation. He pointed to Genesis when he talked about marriage. He pointed to Genesis as being the foundation of everything. We can't leave the Old Testament out. We need the Old Testament because we're starting to know that those who are skeptics and those who are atheists will laugh at you when you start off with the virgin birth. They'll say, how can that happen? We are naturalists. We only believe in natural material. We believe in the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory that suggests that something came from nothing. It's the idea that we just, things just appear. It is, it is the idea that you have to believe with blind faith. Why they laugh at us and say the most foolish people there are are Christians because y'all come to church every week, give your time, talent, and your money, and don't use your brains. You are being called idiots and fools of the faith because of your proclamation and what you believe. In reality, for somebody to believe in evolution, which we have no evidence that evolution even exists. There is no scientific evidence. It is simply corrupt science. What I have learned is science doesn't say anything. Scientists do. The problem is science leaves the evidence. It's up to the scientists to interpret the evidence and give us what it clearly reveals. It could never be the Big Bang Theory. How foolish is that to just believe, bang, everything came into existence. Well, why things aren't banging and exploding to an existence right now? Why well, there's no new orientation? Why are there no new, new revelations of, of, it, of anything that is coming from, from one generation to another where there seems to be this gradual change over so-called millions of years that bring us to the point where we have fallen into evolution where man has supposedly came from monkeys and now he is a man. There is no evidence from bones or any type of records that any of this stuff is true. So why should we believe the secular scientist Amen. that says it is, that right. says there was a bang? Right. If you think about it, right. anytime you ever heard a bang, nothing came into the existence that was powerful or that was productive. When you heard a bang, somebody was shot. Lord Jesus. <laughs> when you heard a bang, there was a car accident and it was damage done. Right. When you heard a bang, somebody got punched in the face. Lord when you heard a bang, there was destruction, and there was nothing that was constructive that was brought forth. In order to believe the Big Bang Theory, you have to believe by blind faith. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Watch this. That It's as simple as this. Bang! You, this should be a car that right here in the middle of the sanctuary. Yeah. If the Big Bang Theory is correct, then a car or something of significance would just appear by random selection, would just show up. And as a result, you look at it, 
And, and, and the scientist says, no matter if it's a sign of intelligence, like a car that's able to go forward, backwards, reverse, we're able to talk to it and tell the, the car to dial a phone number. We see the intelligence all in the devices where you don't no longer have to roll the windows with your hands, but you push a button. Right. We can see intelligence all through it. We can see design right. all throughout the car. How are we foolish enough not to believe that there's not an intelligent designer? Well, the car points to a designer. Yes. If a car could just appear right now and you saw it, mine would say Ford Motors. Oh. If it say Ford Motors, we ought to be looking for who? We ought to be looking for Ford Motors. Right. And even though Ford is dead, just because he's dead don't mean he didn't make it. Right. The reality of it is, if you want to find out about Ford, you got to go into the book. So why can't you go into the book of the gospel in order to find out who created the heavens and the earth? Come on now. Why can't we look logically through the scriptures Come on now. and see that we're not looking for, watch this, we're not like those who believe in a secular world that things bang and appear. That's like believing in magic with no magician, no wand, and no hat, but yet the rabbit appears. Mm. <laughs> now for a rabbit appear, somebody had to put that rabbit there. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to put the rabbit there. For the Bible says that God spoke and everything came into existence from his word. For that the world was framed by his words. And so as Christians, even on be, being silly with this matter, at least we believe in logic, faith, and reason. Because for the Christian, it's more like we believe at least in the magician, which would be God the Father. And we believe at least in his wine. Which would be Jesus Christ. Christ. And we will believe at least in the hat, which would be the Holy Ghost. Yes. All three working together. And through the word of the magician who speaks it into existence, what he's about to do, who uses intelligent mind to construct the magical compulsion. And as he constructs the magical theme, a rabbit appears out of the hat. At least we believe in the magician, the wand, and the hat, which makes logical sense that the yeah. rabbit just appeared. Woo! Right. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Break that down. It is faith with reason. Uh-huh. And Paul is saying, I, I got to show y'all who, who he really is. He's he's the son of David. He's yeah. He's the one that was born of immaculate on, conception. Now. He is the one who was prophesied of old, who goes all the way back all to the way. Old Testament. Yeah. Paul gets to doing his thing as he's ministering to skeptics. And he goes back to the idea of Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The sign is the virgin birth that Jesus comes from, from his mother Mary, from his adopted father, who would be Joseph, who adopted him. His yeah. only true father was God the Father. He was only raised by Joseph. And so the text tells us, behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son. Yeah. It points to Jesus Christ who would come and his name, watch this, will be called Emmanuel. Yeah. That means God with us. Yeah. Jesus the Christ. Jesus meaning Joshua, meaning Jehovah saved. And it was John who looked at Jesus after he showed him the holes in his hand, the piercing in his side, the holes on his feet. Told him, you said you wouldn't believe unless you tested. You need evidence. Jesus says, here's the evidence. He I is, touch me in my hand. Behold. And when John touched it, John said, Jehovah and my God. In other words, John said, Jesus is Jehovah, the one that the scriptures have spoken about. John was pointing to Jesus, who understood who Isaiah was, who helps us to understand his birth is real. It is the birth of Christ. There is no illusion. There should be no confusion. There is no superstition when it comes to the birth of Jesus Christ. And because he lives, he died yes. for the sins of the world. He came through his mother Mary and he came with a sinless life. Yes, yes. He was all man, 
Yet at the same time, all God for the scripture says he learned and he grew even in his understanding as man. But as God, he knew all things. Yeah. And yet at the same time as man, he was limited to his knowledge because the scripture says that he stripped his glory. He laid it all down in order that he might fulfill the will Preach. of the Father. And so now Paul says, let me show you who this no unknown God is. Yes. The one that you seem to be searching for. Because man's heart naturally seeks and searches for God. Paul says, y'all got it wrong, but let me help you get it right. It was the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. The one who came through generation after generation in order to save and redeem man to himself. It was Paul that says he is the savior. Yeah. He is the reason yeah. for the season. It is Paul that expresses this to the philosophers. And as he does, the scripture says many of them yeah. drop their philosophies and begin to follow him along the way. Turn to your neighbor and say, when are you going to bring somebody to Christ? It won't happen until you get ready to defend your faith, until you share your faith of who he is and why he came. And so now we can understand that the good news of the gospel is the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. It is accurate. It is sufficient. It is relevant. And yet at the same time, it is reasonable to consider based on the fact he created the heavens and the earth. And so he stepped in time. The scripture says that when he came over Mary, he overshadowed her just like he did in Genesis when he, the Holy Spirit, overshadowed the earth or as he went upon the face of the deep. And Jesus is able to turn a corrupted, chaotic situation yeah. into a situation where he can get glory out of it. He turned a chaotic situation of Mary being pregnant who didn't have uh, uh, intercourse with a man to so where Mary said, how I'm going to have a baby? I don't even, I ain't even slept with a man. And then the angel said, uh-huh, uh-huh, I know how you're going to have that baby. You've been impregnated by the Holy Spirit. He's overshadowing you. And Mary conceived. And just like in Genesis, God made something out of nothing. And I wish you would give him praise because he's an old time God. He's able to do all things but fail. He's able to blow your mind and do it speedily and abundantly above all you can ever ask or think. His birth was original. His life was immaculate as well as his death was amazing. On top of that, his resurrection will blow your mind. If he can create the heavens and the earth from a spoken word, and if he can be pregnant into a virgin woman, sure enough he can get up from the grave yeah. by the same Holy Spirit yeah. that overshadowed the waters in the deep and overshadowed the woman and gave her birth, which now raises Jesus up from the dead, which brings me my conclusion, because when it's our time to die, he's going to come back at the sound of the trump. Yeah. And after he blows the trump at the resurrection, he's going to raise us from the dead, those who have died in Christ. Yeah. And those of us who remain will be caught up to lead them in the air by oh, the same yeah. wondrous working power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody yeah. shout amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. He's able. Yes. I asked you the question. Before we got started, is the birth of Jesus a supernatural work of God? Or is it just superstition? I think I've concluded with my argument to help you understand there's no superstition in his birth, nor his life, nor his death. Know his resurrection, know his ascension unto heaven, and know the idea that he's coming back again. Uh -huh. It will all be done by the supernatural, wondrous working power yes. of God. Yes. Come on, let's stand Lord. to our feet at this time as we come to our conclusion. If there's anybody here that desires prayer, if there's anybody in here that says, you know what, Pastor, I just I just need a touch from the Lord just to continue on my journey. I just 
I just need him to speak to me to help me to deliver me from some stuff. Whatever it is that you need, yes, yes, yes. the salvation that you need, this is your time to receive. Yes. And if anybody's watching me by technology and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just repeat these words after me. If you believe, the scripture says you can receive it right now by faith. Looking at Romans 10 and 10, do that in the leisure time. I ask you the question, you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do you believe God raised him from the dead? Do you believe he died on the cross for your sins and mine? The scripture says, by the confessing of your mouth and believing in your heart, salvation is made unto you. Uh -huh. And so we praise God in advance for any of you who's saying, Lord, I put my trust in you even now. Yeah. And if that's you, please send me something in my, in my DM or inbox me to let me know that that's the commitment that you made. And we praise God for your life. We Thank encourage you, Lord. Yeah. God's the gospel church. Yeah. So let us all stand to our feet as we close out.